belly full, but we hungry. A hungry mob is an angry mob. A rain a fall, but the dirt is tough. A pot to cook, but the food not enough. Hello and welcome to this lecture on Thomas Malthus and Neo-Malthusian thought. My name is Leon Sultan. I'm an AP Human Geography teacher from Abraham Lincoln High School in California. So, a quick note on this lecture. Please don't copy anything down in red. What you need is written in black on the lecture notes. So, we'll start with a quote from Thomas Malthus's essay on the principle of population, and this is the text that he's most well known for. Must it not then be acknowledged by an attentive examiner of the histories of mankind, blah, 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 population invariably increased, blah, 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 the superior population repressed? Wow, what a mouthful. Okay, so what is he really talking about here? Well, let's break it down. Malthus's basic theory, okay? He's talking about food capacity over time. And what type of relationship do these two things have? When we look at the graph... What type of relationship do we see here? Malthus's basic theory states that food capacity grows in an arithmetic or linear way over time. Now additionally, he observed that population grows in a different fashion. Population grows like this. What type of relationship? Well, that's an exponential or geometric uh, relationship. So what did Malthus predict was going to happen? What he saw, based on his experiences and what he observed at the time uh, that he was alive, was that while food growth was only linear, population growth being exponential would eventually outstrip our resources. So what's going to happen when population grows bigger than the amount of food that we have, the food capacity? Well, what you're left with are an alarming things, alarming things like famine, plague, and epidemics. Okay, so we're going to rewind a little bit. Who was Malthus and when did he live? Malthus lived in England between 1766 and 1834. He was a political economist. He wrote a lot of famous texts, including his most famous, an essay on the principle of population, which we're discussing throughout this lecture today. Now, the context that he wrote was the time of the Enlightenment, when the economic system was called mercantilism. The English were uh, colonizing parts of the world, but worldwide trade and globalization had not yet been established, so the world was very different than it is today. So food production increases in a linear way, population growth increases in an exponential way. In other words, humans will always outgrow their resources. So what happens? This results in things like famine, plagues, and epidemics, and Malthus called these positive checks on population. In order to avoid these, he recommended that we must limit population growth through what were called preventative checks. So Malthus really emphasized that we should try to limit our population before it got too big. These were very controversial ideas at the time. However, they have been adopted in certain forms uh, throughout human history. So he was right, right? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Malthus is still relevant today, or is he? So the first side of the equation is called Neo-Malthusian thought. These are people who believe Malthus was right. So what does Neo-Malthusian mean? Neo means new. Malthusian means based on the ideas of Malthus. So this is one of the piece of pieces of evidence that Neo-Malthusians would use to argue their point. Here's a map of world population growth. This shows the annual natural rate of population increase by country. What are the trends that we can see? Well, if we look closely, we can see high rates of population growth in Sub-Saharan Africa, in the Middle East, in parts of South Asia, as well as Southeast Asia. So, population is growing quickly. What factors are in influencing these trends? We're going to go over this in a few slides. Now, population is half of the equation. The other half of the equation is hunger. And we're going to rewind again. Now, remember the first case study that we discussed in this class. The first case study was Kenya. There's a lot of starvation in Kenya, but it's not because they don't have enough land to grow crops. They have plenty of really good land to grow crops. Unfortunately, a lot of that land is being used to grow tea and coffee for export while people in Kenya are starving. This map right here shows us world hunger in 2011, and it shows the percentage of undernourished population by country, and we can see again the trends. A lot of malnourishment happening in Sub-Saharan Africa, as well as South Asia, parts of Central Asia, Southeast Asia, and even some places in the Americas. 
So what neo-Malthusians would argue is that population growth is still a huge problem today. Now the reason that population growth is still a huge problem today is because in poor countries population growth levels are still high due to lack of family planning, low status of women, and rural poverty. And the evidence we can see on this map right here. Now additionally, neo-Malthusians would also argue that Malthus was right, people are still starving. Why are people starving today? Poverty and food distribution that is very unequal worldwide. Also, in places like Kenya, cash crops have replaced food crops, and so therefore people don't have enough to eat. Neo-Malthusians would show this map as a piece of evidence. Now the third claim Neo-Malthusians would make are that environmental concerns are actually population-based concerns. So the issue today is less about food resources and more about non-renewable resources that we are very reliant on, things like clean water and oil. So in other words, if we took Malthus's original graph and we just replaced the linear growth of food for clean water or fossil fuels, then Neo-Malthusians would argue that Malthus's theories are still very relevant and correct today. So he was right, right? Well, we have to look at evidence on the other side, people who disagreed with Malthus and say that his theories are not relevant to us today. These are critiques of Malthus or reasons why Malthus was wrong. So this map would be a piece of evidence that critiques of Ma uh, critics of Malthus would use. This map shows us countries with total fertility rate below replacement level. In other words, countries whose population is either currently declining or will be declining soon. So we can see the trends on this map. Much of the developed world, Western Europe, North America, and Australia, as well as Japan and South Korea, they have low total fertility um, levels, and so their population is not growing. As a matter of fact, in many of these places, the population is contracting. What factors influence the trends? Well, we're going to go over this later, but basically the demographic transition that these countries are experiencing has influenced this trend. Okay, Here's another piece of evidence that critics of Malthus would use. This graph demonstrates the world doubling time and it shows how doubling time had decreased uh, since 1650 but the current doubling time to go from 4 to 8 billion is actually increasing. Okay. So this is one estimate of population growth that tells us that population growth is actually not exponential, it is flattening out. So to summarize, one of the uh, biggest critiques of Malthus is that population growth is beginning to level off. So it is actually not exponential, but it is leveling off. Okay, why is it leveling off? The reason this leveling off is because rising income levels is leading to a decline in population, family planning, birth control, increased status of women, general urbanization of countries, etc., is leading to a leveling off of worldwide population. Here's one piece of evidence that demonstrates that, and here's another one. So the basic idea behind the demographic transition is that all countries will go through the, four, the five stages and eventually lead to a declining population. Now additionally, critics of Malthus would critique him by saying that food production is not linear. Okay? Thanks to the Green Revolution, hybrid crops, chemical fertilizers, and pesticides have increased food production exponentially. So Malthus got it wrong, they would argue. The graph doesn't look linear. As a matter of fact, this is what the graph looks like. Food is actually being produced exponentially. So here's a piece of evidence that they would use. Here's a typical North American farmer. One farmer in the United States produces enough food to feed 135 people very different than in Malthus's day. Okay, another critique of Malthus is that increased technology and transport make his argument obsolete. Now, back when Malthus was writing, he was writing about a closed system. Okay, England was not importing large amounts of food or exporting large amounts of food. Today, food distribution is global. Refrigeration and transportation make growing food no longer an issue for a single country, but an issue for the entire world. So a piece of evidence is a, here's a um, container ship, and we can see how much we are able to ship from one country to the next, and we actually have refrigeration techniques that makes it uh, possible to ship food. So global trade and technology has made Malthus obsolete, or so some people would argue. So the question now is, do you agree or disagree with Malthus? You have to be able to argue both sides. There is really no right or wrong answer. You just have to use evidence to back up 
your point of view. Okay, now we're going to move on to quiz yourself on your understanding of Malthus. Here, I'm going to give you two quiz questions, and I'd like you to think about these and try and answer them yourself before you advance in the lecture. So, 1789, a British economist named Thomas Malthus published an essay in which he claimed that while population increased at what he called the geometric rate, the means of subsistence grew only at A, A, arithmetic or linear rate, B, a rate depending on the particular culture involved, C, a declining rate, D, an unpredictable rate, or E, an exponential rate. What do you think the answer is? Okay, the answer is an arithmetic or linear rate. The means of subsistence is another way of saying food. Okay. The last question. All of the following are arguments advanced by Neo-Malthusians, modern people who agree with the theories of Malthus, with regard to, to future world population growth, except... So this is one of those questions where all of these are things that Neo-Malthusians agree with, except one of them. Is it A, global food demand will rise as third world countries develop? B, technological advancements will likely solve issues of food production and consumption? C, current environmental problems could keep food producing regions of the world from producing comparable amounts in the future? D, overconsumption of other resources like coal and timber would not be as sustainable as population increases. Or E, even if global population numbers level off over the next several decades, many other environmental issues will still confront the world community. What do you think the correct answer is here? So I'm going to go over my thought process. I'm going to use process of elimination to answer this question. So I'll go one by one. A, global food demand will rise as third world countries continue to develop. Yes. Malthus or Neo-Malthusians would totally agree with that. Um, B, technological advancements will likely solve issues of food production. I don't, I'm not sure that they would agree with that, so I'm going to leave that one. C, current environmental problems could keep food-producing regions of the world from producing comparable amounts in the future. Yeah, I think that Neo-Malthusians would totally agree with that. D, overconsumption of other resources like coal and timber will not be sustainable. Okay, now I remember from the example that other non-renewable resources could be substituted out for food. So that's true. E, even if global population numbers level off, many other environmental issues will still confront the world community. Yeah, I think Neo-Malthusians would agree with that too. So that leaves me with B, technological advancements will likely solve issues of food production and consumption. That's actually an argument that critics of Malthus would make. Okay, well, thanks for watching. This, again, was uh, a lecture about Thomas Malthus and Neo-Malthusian thought. My name is Leon Sultan. I teach AP Human Geography at Abraham Lincoln High School in San Francisco, California. And I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm barely full, but we hungry. A hungry mob is an angry mob. Rain a fall, but the dirt it tough. A pot to cook, but the food not enough.